Good morning, guys. We are building today the Rubicon Models British 15 CWT Canadian Military Pattern Truck. Um, and I've got one done already that looks like this one. So we're, we will be basically building the, the exact same model again. Um, as usual, it's a Rubicon model, so um, make sure that uh, you clean the, the parts very well and that you make sure that um, you use either a fresh plastic glue or a super glue because they use, a, um, I think it's ABS plastic. Works a little bit different, but doesn't matter right now. Um, I am building it for my Indians, so I've got a spare head what I'll, uh, that I'll be using from um, the British 8th Army sprue. Uh, it's that one, so Indian dude shouting things, so whatever. Um, we'll clean that later. Um, originally I promised myself that I would not build models anymore while being hungover because I may or may not have ruined my last crusader I've built, um, but it doesn't matter, I've got in total five, uh, five of those, so I'll just continue building new, uh, new crusaders. Doesn't matter right now, um, we're going into this model. Um, you, as you can see it comes with two sprues and two parts that are glued on a plastic um, or on a, uh, on, a, on a cardboard sheet. Um, you have two options, you can either build the, the canopy closed or you can build with this railing which I think looks way cooler anyway so I'll do that again. Um, anything that's tricky, well if you want to paint the interior of course uh, it becomes really tricky because then you have to uh, take care that the cap is really uh, not fully attached and you can paint the interior if you want to add a driver. I will not uh, do that, I will add the machine gun on top which is very cool that Rubicon starts to deliver these. I think someone at Rubicon has maybe started reading army books and looking at lists and now they're delivering machine guns on trucks where people would usually play them. Maybe not, maybe I'm interpreting too much here, um, but it's very cool that it's delivered with that. And as you can see here with part 11, 12, um, you can also build a guy standing like the one I've just showed you standing in the, uh, in the cupola here, you build it open. And that's what we'll be doing again, so that this whole vehicle looks really in the end. Okay, so let's jump right in. Um, I'll put this aside, you don't have to have a look at that. I will have a look at that. And as you can see, I've been at these sprues already, because I needed a single part and didn't want to rip open the whole package. Let me do that now. From an environmental perspective, I think putting all these sprues in, in plastic foil is horrible. I don't know why they're doing that. Maybe someone of you can explain that to me. Maybe not. Um, I would much more appreciate if they would not do that. But I think that's personal preference. As you can see, I've just got out the, the tarp cover. Now that I'm looking at it, it looks quite cool. Will I be doing that? No, I won't. We put that, this aside and I won't be using it. Okay, we'll start with the... Yeah, it's the, the, the cap, basically. Um, it's very well pre-cleaned, so you don't have to do much here. Um, yeah, if I'm now that I'm looking at it, there's basically nothing you have to clean. This is very cool. And um, we'll start with B10, which is the hood. Cut it open uh, out like this. The good thing about Rubicon is that the plastic is really sturdy, so it's hard to break. It's hard to to ruin your models at that uh, at that point. And I got a completely fresh bottle of contactor liquid, though, so you can see already had too much on, my, on, the, on the brush, so I had to wipe it off. 
Um, now you only have to make sure that the the links are in the back so that you oh my god that's a lot of contactor liquid um i'll have to sort that out later um so the the hood is added now we need the the gear shift and the handbrake please excuse that i'm just breaking them out there but they're for the interior and i don't want you to, to spend too much time on the interior because no one's looking at it anyway and i'm not building these for for showcase models or as a model but more as a gaming piece and as i have got um, a lot of vehicles in my army that i plan to use um, this will be one of many. Okay, now my pliers are gone and I'll 100% need them. So I'll be back in a second and we will probably skip here. Back again. Um, that was short. I don't even know if I will cut it out. But I'm currently building also another model. I'm building a 1 to 48 scale bow fighter um, um, mosquito with my girlfriend for my father's Christmas present. Um, we'll do a little diorama here. So, yeah. Um, again, in the assembly leaflet, I'll show you I'll show it to you right here. Um, you can't really see which goes where, but if you have a look inside it, you see a hole right next to the cap, uh, to the to the um, co-driver seat. And one in the middle. The one in the middle is the gear shift, which is the angled one. If you put it in first, the harder, uh, the latter one is really hard to reach. So we will use that first. It's directional. You can't really go wrong here, but it's again super tricky and a pain in the ass to to put it in there. So I think at the last track I even skipped that part. So because it was horrible to place there and it doesn't really fit into that small tiny hole in there and as you can see again struggling to get it in that position because ah. now it's stuck behind the seat awesome there it is okay um, we'll have to prepare it a little bit further because this part really doesn't 100% go in there. So we'll cut off a little bit, only a little, and try again. And it's really, really tiny in there. You can perfectly skip that part. No one will recognize it, but now you can see when you cut it a little bit off, it fits in there. If you don't do that, you will have a really hard time getting that handle in there. Same as, as with the, the one here. We're cutting off the edges a bit. And then it should be way easier. Yeah. Okay. Um, this now has to rest really a lot because Rubicon always, the, the, the ABS when it's molten, for a start, it takes a long time to, uh, to dry. And we'll go to the next part, which will be we need a C20. What's a C20? We need C17. C20 here is the, the, um, the cockpit. We need C18, that's the the bar of the of the uh, steering wheel that was easy we need the steering wheel, wheel itself which which is t34 be careful that you don't break it because um, steering wheels tend to break really really easily and we need c17 which is this little canister here cut it out and the front axis and lower part of the cap where everything goes in there. Okay, so let's clean those parts and then we go further. And by the way, Christian and I had, a, had the idea that we could do um, a charity live stream of 
some games if you want to. Um, so let me know in the comments if you would think that's a cool idea that we, for example, um, do an either 24 hours battle report where we live stream 24 hours of gameplay and we continue playing as, as long as people are donating for a good cause. Um, or if that's something you would see as ridiculous and not do. Um, and on the other hand side, um, we're currently considering another concept for that, where for every foobar you roll, for every double one and for every unit you lose, um, you gotta take a shot. And um, you can then decide uh, during the live stream um, which will be the next drink. And if you donate something to that good cause, we will be discussing later with you. Um, you will get um, to, uh, yeah. You can decide which drink we have to drink next from the ones we have selected there, um, and then we'll play one or two games and see if one of us is able to roll really bad or really good and get some funny results. Okay. Anyway, um, if you want to add a driver right now, this is important. You don't need C18 and C34. If you don't want to add a driver, you now have to glue in first the cockpit. And it goes in place really neatly here. Remember, um, this is a British truck, truck, so it's a right-hand side drive. Um, I almost forgot about it anyway uh, when I built it, so the first one, so yeah. Um, unusual, but the Tommies always have some special specialties for themselves, right? Um, then you'll glue in the frame or the the, the bar for the, for the steering wheel. And this one is also directional, so you can't really do it wrong. Because, as you can see here, um, it's like half cut. And when you place it in there, um, it fits really nicely. And there is also a pin, so that's good. You probably need to let it rest a little bit longer than I do now. Because it then makes it easier to add the top of the steering wheel. But if you're really careful, you can place it there, and then that's that. Next, we will have to put the cap on top. Uh, don't glue on part 17 before, because part 17 will also need to stick to the, to, to the cap, and you will only give yourself a hard time. Make sure that everything fits. Make sure that the parts you want to glue in are in the right place. Because now you can potentially damage the, the steering wheel you've just built, uh, put in. If everything's fine for you, just add the glue. And carefully, carefully put it in. This is the cap, how it should look like from the inside. More or less. Um, you can also switch to different gears, for example, if you're so much into detail. I'm not, again, this is, will be a gaming piece and not a showcase model. So, yeah. By the way, is, uh, who of you is coming to the Grand Tournament in, in UK from, from Wallet, Wallet Games? We're going there with two, um, we're two from our team, I think. So Christian, uh, Christian and I will go. And um, yeah, we're really excited to see you people there. So if, uh, even if it's not for a game, but just for a beer in the afternoon uh, or in the evening in, in Nottingham, we will be completely down for that and just meet a few people. Cut. Here, part 17 is glued in, C17. The cab is done for the moment. Put it aside and let, us, let it dry really, really, really well. In the meantime, we will um, assemble the trunk. The lower part of the trunk is for all uh, is the same for all uh, variants you can build. The top one will be the different, or will deliver the difference in the model. Um, I think this CMP15, which is, is really easy to assemble, but there or there are not really a lot of, of pieces where you really have to take care that you do it right. Um, the, the gear shift is one of those where you can actually do something wrong. Um, 
and yeah you have uh, quite a lot of options so this is this is neat but getting back to the grand tournament um i'm trying to get my eighth army done till then but i'm i really have doubts that it will work because i've just painted eight indian riflemen and it took forever it really took forever uh, sure it's a new color pattern and everything's unusual for me there because they have not the classic caucasian skin tone that you paint but a darker brownish skin tone which is new again but um yeah i don't know if i will have them ready in time if i got them ready in time i will play definitely um eighth army with four crusaders so probably two crusader one cs two crusader three um one or two india uh, india pattern military carriers um, or india pattern carriers and um yeah i'm not sure about that yet um how much infantry will be in there but as you get so much free stuff when you play indians that is ridiculous um and christian is already pissed off uh, because of that so with, that's basically one reason to play them um Anyway, if I'm not able to finish the, the army until then, I will play Chinese. So, anyone who wants to do a challenge, this is your, your opportunity. If you ever wanted to play against Chinese, um, yeah, you can do it now or never. Because I'm probably not coming over to Cambridge too far. I would love to, but um, time is, is, is scarce and... I, th I don't think I can manage to do that. Um, and yeah. So this will be your only chance to play the ch uh, my, ch my Chinese at least this year. Uh, outside of Germany. Or this year and next year. Here now you have to take care because the parts are heavy and they're not really well um, or they have not really big surfaces where you glue them to each other so let's start it slow this one fits right in this is good Here you have to take a, a care a little at least um, which part goes where. So uh, you will see in very detail there are two holes. And this is the back part. Okay, careful, careful. Okay, it sits right where it should. And you also can see there's uh, there's this tiny gap here where you can put the parts into each other um, so that they stick very well um, and get a little bit attached to each other. Okay. Put the last one in. Let it rest a little bit because this part goes now in there and that's a little bit more tricky but it's also not too bad. Yet again, I don't think I have to really explain it, but this is the top side, this is the bottom side. You add it in. Move everything in position. And done. Sits neatly right on top of each other, each, each, each other's part. Here you can again make sure that the pin that would hold the back flap is really in position. It's just fine adjusting. It's just move, move this a little, move, move that a little until everything's aligned properly. And 
then put it aside, let it rest. We are getting the bars for the for the cover out now. There are three pieces and yes, you can do something wrong here. Um, B2 goes on the middle and this is important. Why is this important? If you have a look here, you, can, you will be able to see there's a little gap in there. You will need that gap because the the, the, the frames or the, the connectors for the um, sidebars, so part 21 and 33, are going in that, in that holes. Uh, for the rest, it's more or less, it doesn't matter, B19, B, B8 are the same. At least I don't see a difference. Cleanup is a little bit tricky here because they're fragile, the parts, so I'll do it like this and it's already a little bit twisted, but we'll get that fixed. And I will be adding those with super glue because I've seen them fall off so many times on the other truck during painting. I seriously was a little bit fed up with that, so this is this. Um, I'm just taking the shortcut, super gluing it into place, done. I'll start from the back. Again, there are two holes in there that you can't really see them because I just super glued them or covered them in super glue. Um, the pins should go right in there or at least a bit, so that you know that you have it in position. Same there. First one's in. Going for the middle one. And you will see, it when you add it in that, uh, correctly, it will really rest in those pin uh, in, the, in those holes um, will sit tight okay you see that's cap it's a little bit twisted here but we will um, correct that with when we have the the sidebar c21 c20 uh, C33. There are so many parts in there. I don't know why there are two arms with steering wheels in there. I don't get that. I can't really see a difference. But yet again, that could be due to Rubicon models, proportions, and detail grade for infantry models which are very realistic so proportions are not like warlord games heroic um, which is cool for scale modelers but on the tabletop it looks just not as good i think because you can't really see details okay now make sure that the lower part goes to the front and the upper part goes to the back i'll put them in with with pliers again because it's just easier for me. And also, again, with super glue. You don't need much, but just uh, when you, like when you build other models, only use as much glue as necessary. Otherwise, you might destroy some details. And arrange it in a way that these little arms are really tucked in the railing otherwise it will look crap okay nice okay this one's in the other one from the height level you can't really do anything wrong because 
they are already leveled when they are when you put the the middle one in the in the gap that's in the b2 thing railing whatever And here you can now see that we have this little issue that this one is a little bit crooked. But it doesn't hurt us too much. We can cope with that because as soon as we fix the middle one and the, the back one, so when they have dried a little bit, we can in the front make sure that it fits nicely. Okay. And we're good. Cool. So that's the the, bunk, uh, the the bed of the truck. Now we have to do the... Oh, yeah, sure. If you're doing the, the tarpaulin cover, you don't put this whole wooden construction at the side. But because it's already attached to the, to the, to the tarp. Um, but we want, didn't want to do that, so I just skipped that part where you have to do the decision. I'll cut them out and put them aside. That's, you need to put aside A2, which is the, the tarp itself. C27, open tarp, and C22, closed tarp. Really easy. And as I'm at it, as it, at it and I want to let everything dry a little bit, I will remove the parts that I won't use anyway. So the driver's arms, those continental European heads, or continental British hats or whatever. Um, we have two rolled up sleeves. We will use the rolled up sleeves for the commander or the, the truck gunner because it's just cooler. Um, we don't need that. This, this will be the... we will need this. Um, oh, I can get those out here already. C15 and C14, we will put them in B09, which is the, the drivetrain and um, the chassis of the truck. Um, this will be the holder for the spare tire. I was always trying to figure out until I put the spare tire in, what the fuck is this? Um, and yeah, it's just the, the spare tire holder. Um, and don't worry, it will look really crap until you put the spare tire in, but then it's quite cool. We are getting us part B09 now. So with two manufacturers of trucks now in, in the business, so Warlord doing plastic Opel Blitz, which is a really cool model, I think, and Rubicon doing a lot of, of trucks now. Um, I don't know how many trucks they have in the, uh, on offer, but there are a lot. Um, which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments if you're Team Rubicon or Team Warlord. I think this is a little bit polarizing, so I'm really curious to see what you prefer. Um, we're, about, uh, we're now adding the, the cap to the front. I will put a lot of glue on there now, because this is a part you can't see, and you can get it a little bit more sturdy if you just drain it in glue. Um, yeah, you, you see those holes in here, they go on the on the pins, or are not really pins, but on the on the frame, and then you should be able to see that everything is aligned properly because there's a little little slope on the front, which is actually the slope of the of the engine compartment. And if you put that on the right place, you'll immediately see that it's looking fine. Um, next will come the spare tire holder. Um, for the direction, they will first be glued together like this. You don't have to do that before, but it makes assembly a lot easier, I think. Glue them together. You don't really have to let it rest already. Doesn't matter. Uh, and then you can see this bar here that goes on there. Um, and, that, and it will stick very well. If you're looking really for, for sturdiness, I will do that because I'm using plastic glue. Add, it, add a little bit of plastic glue to the back of the cap because it will stick there too. Awesome. Now you just have to make sure that everything's uh, right side up so that you can put in the spare tire later. 
Okay, and then we'll have to add the, the, the transport part where you, again, as you can see, Rubicon models are quite self-explanatory in most parts. Um, you can just fill up the, the back part. Important is that you fill up pill, uh, the, the, the bars again because they go in here. You don't have full contact with the back uh, with the part of the uh, with all parts of the of the flat bed here, but um, this will glue, this will glue, this and this, and um, yeah, you will you will really feel it when it's in place because then you can't move it in this direction anymore, as you can see. It sticks very well. Okay, this is this perfect. Now we need to let it rest again, as usual, um, and we'll assemble all that chisel that goes on the bottom of the of the truck after that we are, we are fairly fairly far after that we close the canopy um, assemble the gunner and add the uh, the roads uh, the road wheels and that's it so let's get out the fuel tanks what i'd like to do now is that i put them on the parts when i cut out more pieces uh, in one run i put them on the uh, on the description where they should go later especially when they're looking so similar like so many of those this goes here the bumper did you know that uh, Canada during World War II was the largest manufacturer of trucks in the world? That was this is quite funny, I think, because you always think when you hear of Canadians. I personally always think of um, the the ram kangaroo, um, and actually they had a huge amount of trucks apparently in their arsenal and provided them to the whole Commonwealth and Allied forces. Yeah, so this is the reason why this Canada military pattern truck is so popular or was so popular I think there were 100,000 pieces or something like uh, of it built um, just because it was very reliable rather cheap I'd say and uh, it was working all the time very properly When we've finished cutting and um, cleaning these parts, the, the main part of the truck should have settled so far and then we can, be, you know, we can move on. And glue all this stuff in place. For the, for the axis on the front and for the gear, I will use again super glue. because it holds the wheels and I don't want the wheels to fall off. That happened again with the previous one, although I think it was more of a problem because I used very old glue and um, it wasn't really melting the, the, the plastic. And then things fall apart. At the moment I'm quite satisfied with how it, it goes. Really, I was not sure if I should do this video today. As I said, I'm a little bit hungover. Um, but it seems like so far I've not done any major mistakes uh, in assembling, so lucky me. Um, yeah, yesterday there was a fraternity festival and as you would expect was a, a, a certain amount of beers involved so when I woke up this morning I was not a hundred percent sure if I would survive the day and yet here I am building a truck with you isn't that cool add the gas tanks in there um, for the gas tanks it's important that the the fill nozzle however that's called correctly in English is at the front 
and you have to fight it in place really because it doesn't fit well oh my god um, yeah it it should sit like this in there some more or less i don't really care too much about this part um, because this is where all the the dirt gets in when the truck drives in the desert so we will add a lot of weathering at that part anyway yeah. i will start with putting in all the the boxes and then the the dust guard later after the boxes have settled because last time i realized you're really prone to to flipping them over when you're assembling it later no, or if you're assembling the dust guards before you assemble the, the boxes. And the last gas tank. Yeah, whoops, my bad. First the gas tank, then the, this box. The, the box uh, C25. Make sure everything sits correctly in place. Then dust guards or mud guards. Um, did you know that those dust uh, or mud guards in Germany are or are, are translated to uh, shit wings, if you would di uh, di uh, translate it directly? And then someone should say we Germans don't have humor. No, they're really called co uh, called Kotflügel. And code is uh, um, an old school word for shit, and flügel is wings, so it's literally shit wings. So, yeah, the make sure that the the bumper bar is is angled properly and not crooked or anything, and then. You're good to go. We'll let it settle a bit, and in the meantime, we'll build the gunner for the truck. Um, we will not glue it, uh, glue him in yet. We will do that later, um, after we've painted him. That's because when you do it now, you can't reach all the parts anymore, and um, I don't don't like to paint inside a cap. I'll just spray a dark tone in there and then whatever color comes in lightens it a bit but I'm not going for detail interior so it would be difficult to paint the dry, uh, the, the, the gunner properly. Also um, he's not really gunning the gun but he's standing there looking out and in this uh, very special case shouting some motivational s slogans or whatever. Where's the body of it? Where's the body of this, of this guy? Really? Oh, come on. Yeah, so we will move this aside. Maybe we don't build a gunner for it. <laughs> because it seems like uh, I, have, I don't have a body in here. How come? How is that even possible? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Fuck it, then we will build the... the roof closed and then we can better differentiate the, the trucks on the battlefield anyway so there's the one filled with with guys and someone looking out of the top uh, of the top and the other one is just closed nothing's going on here 
that this really worries me. Where's the body of him? Yeah, when you cut out the, the Bren gun, be really, really careful because it's super, super fragile. And when you go for the bipod of it, be even more careful. I'm trying to get it. I had, have done bad experience with, with a knife here, uh, with, a, with a cutter, uh, with the, 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 how's it called, the, the, this one. Oh my god, this one. You see, I'm not fully here already. Um, because you break the legs of it. And then, yeah. It looks, or you have to fix it and then it looks horrible. So this is the rail for the gunner. Really, really careful with the brand gun. the bipod as I said if necessary put a, a new blade in your knife there's I think nothing more annoying than finishing a model nearly and then breaking an essential part okay we only have the wheels left afterwards so Let's jump in directly and put the roof on it. If you're wondering where the driver is of, uh, of the driver's body, um, he's now commanding a Crusader tank. So maybe you got operated if you want. So I've used the body to, to add a, a commander to my Crusader because they don't come with a commander, unfortunately. Um, but you will see that later because we're also doing, or I've got a few crusaders left I have to build. Um, oh yeah, here the, the handlebar or the, the rail for not falling out of the, of the hatch. Um, it's important that you put it in the correct way, which is tilted to the front. When you hold the part in your hand, you will know what I mean. And then we have to assemble the Bren gun. This is tricky. I would very much prefer to see the Bren gun being, by, um, being attached here on the railing, because I think that would make more sense. But it seems like this wasn't done historically. If you have any pictures of a CMP with a Bren gun on it, I would love to see that. If not, well, we'll just go for 1940k and do it fantasy style, right? This is a really, really tiny bit now. So, add some glue. Add the bipod and put it aside somewhere so that it can rest and keep that form that it has now. And now we've got to add the spare tires. So B17 is the spare tires and the rest is just normal tires. Doesn't matter where they go because they fit everywhere I think. Um, and um, they have also this directional pin in there so you can't do it wrong. Seriously, they will stick very well and you can't do it wrong. Cut, 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 cut. And that one. Okay. I'll first put in the, the spare tire. If you're really into detailed painting, this is something you should probably do later. But I like this flop when you just let it fall in there. And the tires will be done with super glue again. Okay. 
you can see can't do it wrong even I can't do it wrong now okay this is in the right position and the last one goes in there now all we got to do is make sure that these are angled properly and that we don't have any drag in there. And we are for the most part done. We ju now just have to add the machine gun. Very, very carefully. And I will put it in here. And that axis... And done. Perfect. Okay, cool. Um, this was the build for the 15 uh, CWT CMP. That's the model. And I think it's a really nice one. Difficulty very low, very, very low. Um, nice beginner model, and you always need a few of those in your army. So I'd say. It's a full buying recommendation and you should go for it if you need another truck. And I'll show you the one-on-one -on -one comparison again to what it looks like when it's painted. Cool. Okay. So, um, we'll go for another build with me for a Crusader later, so, um, so stay tuned. And I've also got an M36 and Panther here lying on, uh, on, my, on my shelf. So. Both from Rubicon, let me know what I should build next and yeah, see you soon.